Welcome to the HR Chat Show, one of the world's most downloaded and shared podcasts designed for HR pros, talent execs, tech enthusiasts, and business leaders. For hundreds more episodes and what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com. Welcome to another episode of the HR Chat Show. I'm your host today, Bill Bannum. And in this episode, we're going to consider why HR professionals need to think about two key areas of human behavior in today's tech-driven world. And joining me on this episode is the awesome, fantastic, wonderful, very, very clever Terence C, adjunct professor over at Holt EF. Hey, Terence, welcome to the show today. Well, thank you very, very much for having me, Bill. Um, you know what? I just realized that everything you said just now about me, they're all wrong. So, you know, like, uh, <laughs> so, but still, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. Well, uh, listeners, I've, I've got the chance over, over the last few days ahead of this interview to, to have a chat with Terence and get to know him a little bit. And uh, I'll tell you what, he's a pretty nice guy. And he's got a great sense of humor. Mm-hmm. And I'm very much looking forward to this conversation today. Uh, Terence, why don't we start by you taking a minute or two and telling our listeners a bit more about yourself? Well, thank you. Once again, thank you very much, you know, like for having me, uh, Bill. Uh, you know, the f- new are a very nice guy. And wait a minute, what are we doing? Like, uh, we, it, it seems like we're actually giving each other compliments and nothing more than that. Let me, like, anyway, let me jump into the, um, the conversation. Uh, my name is Terence C, and I am a professor of finance uh, at Hout International Business School. Uh, and um, but I don't really just teach um, because I also co-founded a company in AI. Uh, we have got about sixty people right now, uh, and uh, we operated uh, like uh, we're operating out of Singapore uh, as well as the UK. We have got a sizable team in Vietnam. Um, and, uh, yeah, we like to think that we are, um, at, you know, in many ways at the forefront of, uh, artificial intelligence. And, uh, on top of that, I do actually write, uh, write, write things here and there, uh, give my take on, you know, where, you know, where we're going in the technology driven world, as you were mentioning earlier, Bill. Perfect. I didn't know that you, uh, you co-founded a, a business as well. Okay. Very good. You're a busy man. Um, why don't you tell us a bit more about Holt? Now, if, if that's OK, uh, it's it's a pretty impressive organization and uh, Holt will be the, the 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 key partner for Disrupt HR London 18.0. And we're looking at uh, September to be hosting mm. that one. But you're going to be speaking at our next one coming up on May 9th at that's the correct, yes. Rise Centre. Um, yep. Before we get into all of that, why don't you just tell our, our folks here listening to this show a bit more about Holt? Well, um, I think Holt is, uh, is an international business school, as I mentioned. Well, at least that's the name. Uh, we've got campus on campuses on uh, in London, uh, in Boston, uh, and as well as in Dubai. Um, I think like a, what really sets us apart as a as an organization or other business school is that we really really emphasize on the doing part rather than just the academic uh, and the you know and the theory part, which is the reasons why you know like um, uh, like. People like me who actually like a, like our co-founded companies, we can actually uh, bring in like a bring our actual experience into the classroom um, to make it like a, you know to make it interesting and more importantly to make it relevant you know to to our students. Um, on top of that, EF has got uh, Holt EF uh, has got a very very large um, operations divisions if you like uh, Astrich which caters to executive education so you know like uh, it's you know, it's it's a school that covers pretty much uh you know all age range when it comes to business education thanks for tuning in to the hr chat podcast if you're enjoying this episode we'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe and leave a five star review on your podcast platform of choice and now back to the conversation Excellent. Thank you very much, Terence. So uh, let's get into the main crux of today's conversation then. And that's going to be based around all things AI, because it's a terribly sexy, uh, very intriguing subject for for many folks at the moment. It's becoming mainstream, the use of 
tools such as generative AI mm. at the moment, which you know, only a few months ago, that wasn't the case. So let, let, let's start with uh, what, what is your view on the current development of AI and how it's now permeating into the, the average person's lives? Mm. You, know, I, you know, I must admit, uh, uh, we, uh, you know, together with my other co-founders, we started the company in 2017. Um, way back then, uh, AI was very, uh, a, a very, very new um, subject. Um, the technologies involved today has been around for, I think, at least 20 years, you know, at least the, the mathematical concepts behind, even longer than that, I guess, you know, the, the mathematical concepts. But way back in 2017, I remember that, like, uh, it, was, it was very, very new to, uh, to the business world. So, um, you know, like, uh, I re like uh, when we first started the company, it was, uh, it, like, uh, there were lots and lots of interest. Um, but, you know, if we were to fast forward six years to now, um, the uh, developments, the progress, the advancement, uh, I must admit, you know, have been, you know, like, I don't know, breathtaking, uh, you know, the, it, it, like, it, 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 it looks like it, it, it really is a quantum leap from where we were, like, uh, you know, just six years ago. So, you know, if we were to look at, you know, what is going to happen in the next six years, um, it will be like, uh, you know, I'm sure we will see even greater developments. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, they, they would all be, you know, like uh, good stuff or like uh, they will all be bad stuff. I think, you know, like everything, like, uh, in, in where, like uh, whether it's technology or not, you know, there are benefits and there are definitely downsides like that we actually need to take into account. But at the moment, I have to say, you know, the, um, the AI development is, um, is really like uh, quite something. I think what what really actually gets everyone to be excited and like uh, you know like you were saying like uh, you know people get very enthusiastic about is the fact for the first time you know it seems like uh, it's it, AI as a technology has always been something that you work with companies and then companies will use AI as a tool to provide um, certain services. Um, I think the what really makes um, ChatGPT very very different is the fact that you and I as individuals can really actually try out, you know, what AI could actually do. And I, that, I believe, fires up the imaginations of like, uh, you know, like of a lot of people. Um, and probably that is also the reasons why all of a sudden there is this sudden urge to basically like uh, in the US, you know, they were actually calling for a pause of like a development in like uh, in AI. So it's a fascinating time when it comes to you know, artificial intelligence technologies. Okay, so there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, uh, of uh, business leaders and HR pros out there right now thinking about how they can, uh, how they can adopt mm. better technologies and specifically AI powered technologies, deep learning, deep language type technologies yeah. to improve to improve their businesses. And they understand that they've got to get on this now because everybody else is. Well, what yeah. do you think are some of the key considerations for leaders? and HR pros when it comes to adopting technologies such as AI for right. business? Right. Um, I think like, uh, you know, one thing that I learned, you know, like uh, in the, you know, like in the development of our company, at first we thought that, you know, like, uh, you know, AI, everyone will buy AI uh, because it can provide companies, businesses with a superior uh, proposition, you know, as to what they like uh, they can do. And then we realized that it is not that easy because like for a couple of reasons one was we tend to think ai as a um at least you know in the past we tend to think ai is a miracle solution to a lot of problems as it turned out it is nothing more than a technology in other words a tool a tool that we can use uh, now the problem then is for anyone like any businesses who want like uh, that look that want to look at taking in integrating AI as part of the business to, um, you know, like uh, to improve their own offerings through the use of technologies. It is not just about saying, oh, you know what, we are going to use AI and therefore things will happen. There is a lot of thinking behind um, that needs to be done in order to one, integrate the tool, making sure that the tool is using it like uh, used in the, uh, you know, like in the, in the, like a, the tool is used um, together with the right uh, processes to like, uh, you know, the tool is used correctly with the right workflows. 
Um, so it is all about, you know, organization. This is like a, a, as much as about organizational redesign or at least operationally, you know, we like a rethink, like a, what you need to like a, to do in order to bring the, uh, the, you know, the technology to like, um, uh, uh, you know, to, to maximize the, the benefits you can get from the, from the, uh, from the technology. The second thing like uh, that we learned from it is it is not like a, in, in order for AI to work, it is not just the fact that you know the ai model or the ai component uh like uh you know like uh, it's not just that it's it also involves um a lot of other traditional it uh you know like operations like uh, uh system engineers uh software architects all of these they are critical as it like uh, as it turned out I remember when we first started, like uh, in 2017, we were uh, we were looking at a job market where everyone who actually like uh, knows something about computer science or you know undergraduates who are about to go into the last year of their bachelor program in computer science, they would all be snapped up by the time they they like uh, you know be halfway <coughs> through their through the uh, education. Because at that time, they, everyone was trying to actually like a chase uh, computer scientists, right, or, or or AI scientists. As it turned out, like um, what really matters is not the you know the AI scientists, or like a, at least not only the AI scientists. What really matters is how can you make sure that the AI model, when you are embedding it into your company system, how can you make sure that the benefits that is being turned out by the AI model can actually be uh, used by the organization itself. The analogy we use is is this: um, no matter like a, it's like it's like a Ferrari engine, right? Um, no matter how powerful your engine is, uh, without the rest of the car, you won't be able to get like a going like a, you won't be able to get from point A to point B. You do need the rest of the car. So what like a, you know like a, the second thing we learn uh, as a lesson is that there is definitely a need for like a, for like a, for businesses to think exactly what is needed in order to create the necessary support so that we can rip the benefits of AI. The third one, which is a lot more, I think like, a, you know, which is surprise at first, but like a, not really a surprise with the benefit of hindsight is the fact that as it turned out, if you really want to actually get like a, make the most use out of a technology, it is really complement the technology with human beings. The reason is simple because technologies can do certain things very, very well, whereas human beings can do certain things very machines cannot. So, you know, calculations, machines will win every day. But when it comes to, say, problem solving, machines cannot do that, or at least many problems, it cannot be like a, it, they cannot solve at the moment. So, the key. To making like a, you know making AI or any advanced technologies like a, you know like a, to make like a, to make them work like a work for us is the fact that let's like, to think through how do you actually combine the humans like a, with the technologies themselves. This is what like a, in general people what people call human in the loop. You do need the humans like a, there in order to get the uh, you know to, to to bring the most out of any technologies. Okay, thank you very much. So there will be lots of uh, lots of jobs which will be lost to AI. That that's that's inevitable. Um, but also, I keep hearing that there are going to be lots of new types of jobs that will be created that uh, have not even been invented yet, Terence. Uh, on, on the back you know of uh, the, the, this new revolution. Well, my my next question for you, Terence, is. <laughs> You may be the guy to ask. Maybe, maybe you can point to some of these jobs that haven't been invented yet. Maybe you've got suggestions as what what they might look like. Ha, that's a that's a great question. I think yeah. I think like uh, one thing that it's uh, that is interesting um, is this. A lot of people fear that technologies actually like uh, got like uh, you know would replace uh, like uh, would would take away our jobs, eliminate jobs. Um, as it turned out, I think this is a this is a conversation that you know has been going on for at least what 200 years you know every time when there are technologies coming out people actually got uh, scared about losing their jobs what happened is it is like uh, it is not usually it's not the case you know this is overdone um there was a study done uh, quite a while back uh, looking at 260 jobs in the us 
uh, from the 50s, I think all the way down up to 2000, or from the from the 60s, all the way up to the year 2000. And uh, the, the study actually looks at all of these 260 jobs, how many of them actually got completely eliminated? The answer was one, only one job. What was, like, uh, what was that job? Elevator operator, you know, the person who was actually like, uh, you know, who was doing the pressing the buttons for you in the lift, basically. So ultimately, I think like, uh, you know, where jobs are like, uh, you know, where machines are really going to actually take away is not a job unless our job is made up of only one task. It is very unlikely that we will be seeing like, uh, you know, our jobs being taken away. What we will see, however, is that part of our jobs will get automated. Which basically means that you know a lot of our like uh, you know we, we will have to continue to develop our own skills in order to catch up with the technologies so that we can actually do our jobs better with the technologies. So I guess you know like uh, you know like I, I like it would it would be um it would be too uh, you know arrogant of me to even think like uh, you know I, I I know what kind of new jobs there will be. But what I can actually say is that, you know, like a certain skills and competencies like will be needed for the for the future of work. I guess, you know, the one thing that is important, the, one of the most important, uh, you know, competencies needed is to be able to solve problems, advance problems, um, you know, problem solving. I think for like a problem solving is one pro like a, is one thing that machines cannot actually take away. And um there was a if if I were to actually like uh, go a little bit academic, there was something called the O like the O-ring uh, O-ring theory. O-ring basically was the uh, you know I think it was what 1998 when the space shuttle actually like um it fired like uh, it it like it was launched like a uh, 10 seconds later it actually got uh, it actually exploded, and uh, <clears throat> the post like a uh, post accident investigations revealed that. What actually caused the explosion like 10 years after the launch was the fact that there is a sealant, the O-ring, uh, with the like uh, on, on the on the fuel tank. Um, what happened was that you know, like overnight, like uh the temperature dropped substantially, and the the O-ring actually got frozen, and then the following morning, like uh, when the temperature actually went back up again, uh, cracks started to happen, like uh, to 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 uh to to appear on the O-ring. So when the space shuttle actually took off, all these li the liquid fuel actually flows into the engine and then like a, like a kaboom, you know, the whole thing actually like a blew up. So what is like a, what the O-ring theory is suggesting is this, you know, any like a, the strength of any solution, right? Um, you know, it is as strong as you know, the, its weakest part. If we do not actually solve the weakest part, you know, no matter how how um, uh, robust uh, a technology is, no matter how good a solution is, it is not going to like uh, you know like uh, fulfill its potential. Not least because what we needed to do is to actually make sure that the entire in the entire process, every single step would need to actually play its role. Every single steps would need to actually operate, interact with each other. Uh, smoothly, right, uh, and and without without problems. I believe that you know, in in the like uh, as we are going into the future, that one you know the external like uh, the environment is becoming more and more complex or uncertain or very you know as people call it, disruptive, and yet at the same time we want to harness um, you know like uh, uh, sophisticated technologies, being able to continuously solve the problem along the entire value chain, along the entire support system, I believe that is very, very critical. And I believe that, you know, like uh, I will leave it to the HR professionals to come up with the with the with the right skills. But I do believe that very much but like I do very much believe that this is the type of competencies that everyone should start developing. Right? That probably requires not like uh, you know anything from being able to understand how technologies work basically technical skills all the way down to probably even grit and and resilience you know like a very like a, if you like you know cognitive uh you know like a type of uh you know like a, a um uh you know characteristics one would need in order to you know like a, be able to, to thrive and succeed in the future
Excellent. Thank you very much there. Uh, regular listeners of this show will know that I am not scared of the shameless plug. And just thinking back to something that Terence mentioned uh, in his previous answer there. Um, why not check out episode HR Chat episode 298 listeners. That's with Dr. Philip Mead, who uh, worked at NASA in 2003. And after the Space Shuttle Columbia explosion, Dr. Mead was among those tasked with revitalizing oh. the culture at NASA Space, mm. uh, Kennedy Space Center. So do check that one out. Uh, Terrence, we've only got a couple of minutes left today. Yep. Oh, no, I can't believe this. Um, so uh, you are going to be a speaker at the May 9th Disrupt HR London, which um, I, I have the pleasure of, of co-organizing. Um, and uh, you and I went through your talk yesterday. I'm very excited for it. It's, uh, it's a rapid fire format. You get five minutes, 20 slides, 15 seconds per slide, of course. In 60 seconds or less, Terrence, can you can you uh, offer a brief overview of what you'll be talking about and a couple of the hoped for learning outcomes? 60 seconds or less, go. I believe, like so, there are two things I would like to, uh, I will be talking about. Um, both of them are related to what are the issues we are facing today with the, um, I wouldn't say younger generations, in general, the workforce, um, distractions, and the fact that, you know, our like uh, ability to think um, has been eroded by the massive use of technologies. Um, I don't think I'm, like, I'll be able to offer any solutions, but what I do hope is that, you know, within the, the five minutes, I'll be able to share some of the, um, the, uh, the, the thinking with, like, uh, with you and, uh, you know, raise the, uh, you know, like, uh, hopefully, you know, I would be able to, like, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, 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 convince you that these are like a uh, two issues that I think like, uh, you know, HR professionals would need to actually think about. Excellent. I think you had about four seconds to spare there. Good work. And just finally, Terence, how can our listeners connect with you? So maybe that's through LinkedIn. Perhaps you want to share your email address. Maybe you're really cool and you're on Instagram, TikTok, places like that. And of course, how can they learn more about Holt Business School? Well, um, they can always like, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. It's Terence T comma phd um but like uh and i don't i'm not on tiktok i'm too old for tiktok i'm too old for instagram uh i'm probably like uh you know, the facebook like uh, age but i don't i don't really use facebook um uh and uh, how is uh, uh the website i think is how dot edu i think that that's what it is but bill i must admit all right um i know i talk too much so come to think of it <laughs> five minutes uh you know 20 slides it's actually a good thing for me, come to think of it. So, <laughs> like, uh, otherwise, you know, if you le let me talk, like now, I can actually go on and on and on and on for the next, I don't know, 65 minutes, 70 minutes. So, good work, Bill. Good work. Good thinking. <laughs> well, we'll just have to get you back on so you can talk some more. But for today, Terence, um, you and I have only just got to know each other a little bit. We've only just been introduced. But I like you already. You're a good guy. Uh, I definitely want to do another one of these chats with you soon. But for now... Thank you very much for being my guest on this episode of the HR Chat Show. Thank you very much for having me, Bill. And listeners, as always, until next time, happy working. Thanks for listening to the HR Chat Show. If you enjoyed this episode, why not subscribe and listen to some of the hundreds of episodes published by HR Gazette. And remember, for what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com.